Welcome back to the gun dungeon, guys. We're gonna do a little chicanery here today. And I've been doing a little bit of playing around with getting some information on ballistic coefficients and how, how it affects bullet velocity and velocity drop at 100 yards. Well, the last couple of times I've done it, I've had different calibers. So this time I'm looking to eliminate some variables and put a few variables to the test. And what I mean by that is I have 150 grain round nose. These are all loaded in 30 out six. 150 grain round nose meant for a 30-30. But if you can see this one actually has fast written on it. So it is a full charge for a 150 grain bullet. So we'll have that going full speed. And then I have the exact same bullet loaded down to about 2,500 feet per second. So with these two loads, what we're gonna see is how starting muzzle velocity affects velocity drop at 100 yards from the muzzle to 100, just seeing how the different starting velocity affects the, the overall loss. Now, one of the reasons that I have this one loaded down is because I have it going about the same speed as this 208 grain ELD bullet that has a very high ballistic coefficient. I'll have all those written down once we do the, the data here, get collect this, the velocities. I will show you the ballistic coefficients of each of these bullets, and then we'll talk about the data after that. But this is a 208 grain or going about 2,500 feet per second. So this downloaded 3030 bullet load is going to match the velocities of that one. And this has a very low ballistic coefficient. So we're eliminating the variable of the velocities and we're the only variables is weight difference and ballistic coefficient difference. Now, this brings me to the fourth load. This is 150 grain uh, spire point full metal jacket here with a higher ballistic coefficient than our fast 30-30 bullet. But this one is also loaded to a max charge. So these two are gonna have the exact same bullet weight and the exact same charge starting velocities. The only difference is gonna be a ballistic coefficient difference. How you doing, Elvis? You wanna say hi? Say hi to the, to the camera here. You wanna do a little shooting? First off, what we're gonna to do to start is I'm gonna get point of impacts because I'm gonna be shooting through two chronographs. I'm gonna shoot through one up close and one at 100. Hopefully that way I can get the data off of just one round and we're not having to deal with averages and moving the chronograph back and forth. I know chronographs don't all read the same, but if I have the same chronograph up there and the same one down here for all four different shots, no matter if one's slow or one's fast, it doesn't matter because we're, we're comparing the difference between the rounds. So if one's a little slow up there and the one down here is a little fast, it's gonna be the same for all of them, so it shouldn't matter. So let's just go ahead and get our point of impacts because I wanna make sure I'm not gonna shoot my chronograph that's up there. And then we'll set up and get some data collected. All right, so got the two fast ones loaded up first and then the two slow ones. Let's just see where we wind up. Boy, you better get on out of here. You better get on out of here. You ain't gonna like this. All right. We got puppers taken care of there. Dang, I thought they were sided in for that round. All right, that was the fast 30-30. Those are hitting how they really need to be. That's the full metal jacket, 150. This is the downloaded 30-30 bullet. 
I'm going to aim high on this one because it's probably going to hit low. Man, those are all piling right in at the same spot. I have my 208 grader. This one's going to suck. enough that one hit pretty high all right guys i'm gonna take my chronograph up there i think i know where i'm hitting i'm gonna try to get lined up here see what we can do so i'd already used this target previously in another video if you watch my stuff you'll know that but these two holes is already here you can tell those are six five holes and then that 30 cal hole here that was the very first shot the fast 30 30 bullet and i was aiming here look at that and then over here was the next two shots the uh, the fast 150 grain full metal jacket and the slow 30 30 bullet. And then I moved down here and aimed at this dot for the 208 grain ELD and I hit here. So the only one hitting off of point of impact really is that 208 grainer and surprisingly it's hitting high. I hope that remains true throughout the rest of this. If not, I'm gonna have a dead chronograph. All right, guys. This is what we have going on here. Chronograph up there at that target. One right here. All right, let's try this. Let's do them in order as we did last time. This is the fast 30-30. We're going to make a trip between each shot, just so I know that chronograph up there and this one, it's the same shot. So, oh, crap. It's a little nerve-wracking. The chronograph's alive. 2814 at the muzzle here. So see what it is up there. All right, so as you can tell, that one did not read up there. The camera's crooked. So we're gonna try her one more time. Those 30 30 bullets don't want to feed in there at all. All right, this is the fast 30 30 bullet. Oh 28.08 on that one. 28.08. Oh Let's go check the one up there. Hope it read it. Y'all be sure to go over and check out Vetter Holsters. They're a big sponsor of the channel. Help me out quite a bit. So y'all get over there and help them out as well. Here's one of their outside the waistband models. Awesome design. They have about any design you can think of. They're also one of the few companies that I've seen making holsters like this with the claw attachment inside the waistband model that fits the Glock 29 and the 10 millimeter versions of the XDMs. So if you have a gun, they probably make a holster for it. Check out Vetter Holsters. And while we're at it, I got them mentioned target sports they just became a sponsor of the channel if you shoot very much throughout the year their ammo plus membership is well worth it it'll pay for itself in the year's time if you shoot very much at all so be sure to go check out target sports their link is below all right 24 42 what we had up there let's do the 150 grain Full metal jacket. That is a boat tailed bullet, by the way, in case I didn't mention it. So, a little better ballistic coefficient. Whew. Still standing. 2856 is what we got down here. So, check it up there. All right, so 2640, that was, I've not done any math yet. Man, I hate single-loading this thing. 
not done any math yet, but that seems substantially less velocity loss. Now we're gonna do the slower 150 grain 30-30 bullet. Twenty-five oh nine down here. Let's see if we got it up there. Twenty-two eleven, guys. Twenty-two eleven. One more. Are we gonna make it? Are we gonna make it, guys? Come on. There we go. All right. Two hundred eight grain ELD. If I remember, this one hits high. Yep. Twenty-five seventeen down here. I got those pretty daggone close. That downloaded thirty thirty bullet in that one. Let's go see what we got up there. Twenty four eleven. I'm two hundred eight grainer. You know, I'm just gonna say I had a lot of people tell me in a Facebook reloading group that this test wouldn't do anything because you can't tell at a hundred yards. Just from what I'm seeing so far, without crunching numbers, I'm gonna say you can. Let's go crunch them, see what we come up with. Here it is, guys, if I can get my grubby fingers out of your way. Here's our results. So 150 grain round nose. This is the ballistic coefficient. Muzzle velocity, seven yards or so. And 100 yard velocity. And this is the loss that we had. So you can see how I've got this broke down here. Same thing for all. Now, this is something that I found fairly interesting because this was a variable that I was testing here. This is the exact same bullet, exact same ballistic coefficient, exact same diameter, exact same rifle, exact same cartridge, everything, except for we had a higher starting muzzle velocity. And as you can see, the higher starting muzzle velocity caused you to lose more velocity faster. Now, will that that would be more of a curve if I was betting as you went on downrange. But I like to explain it as like if you try to run through a swimming pool. If you're trying to run real fast, it feels like you have more resistance than if you're trying to walk. Well, it's the same with air, only not as drastic, if that makes sense. So that was one, one variable here we took out was everything here and just changed the velocity, start velocities. You can see there is a difference. So here, between these two, these are going to be really close to the same muzzle velocities. The only difference was the ballistic coefficient, the style of bullet. And you can see just that difference in the ballistic coefficient here had a drastic change on our, uh, our, our muzzle velocity versus 100-yard velocity loss. And then you come over here to the ELD, which had the highest ballistic coefficient of 0.69, had the same, close to the same start velocity as this one over here. So the only thing that's different is our bullet weight, which I don't think is a factor here because sectional density is more part of the, of the formula for finding out your ballistic coefficient. These are all G1 ballistic coefficients. So we had real close to the same muzzle velocities and look how much of a difference loss here. Big, big difference. So you can see from a point one, what was it a six? Yeah. 0.186 ballistic coefficient bullet going close to the same speed as this 0.69 ballistic coefficient bullet, same diameter. We had a substantial difference in the muzzle loss, muzzle velocity loss versus 100 yard velocity loss. My bad. But yeah, pretty interesting information here, I think. So I'll let y'all have a little closer look at it here. You can pause it, look at it, do whatever you want to. But pretty interesting. And that's what I got for you today, guys. Let me know what you thought about today's test. If you like this type of stuff, I can do more of this type of stuff. It's my backyard hillbilly science project anyway. So just let me know what you thought. Until next time, guys, stay tuned.